over these last days, we've been delving into the nature of suffering and to try to become aware of the mystery, the great law that lies behind it. But right now, what is there has to be given out. And what is there is to reveal to you my own deepest secret. Let's see what it evokes for us. There was a spiritual master who used stories as a, a method of imparting teachings. One day he was walking beside a river with one of his students and he was telling the student a story which revealed one of the great truths. But after the story was finished, the student said to the teacher, Master, how is it that you know exactly which story to tell at any given time? And the master said, well, let me respond to your question by telling you a story. He said there was a prince who wanted to become the greatest marksman in the land. So he went to a great teacher of archery, and after many years of training, he indeed did, did become the greatest marksman. But when he was returning to his palace, riding his horse along the road, he came across a village in which there was a barn, and on the side of that barn, there were a hundred bullseyes and in the middle of every bullseye, there was an arrow. And when the prince saw this, he said, Even I could not do this. I wonder who this marksman is. And he kind of verbalized it aloud, and it so happened that there was a little boy walking by, and. He kind of snickered at the prince and he said, Oh, that's the town madman. The prince said, But he's the greatest marksman I've ever seen. I need to meet this man. The boy said, oh, You know, he said, Nor is his name. And he shoots his arrows and then he draws the circle around them. <laughs> and the master said, this is the way of my story. <laughs> I have to ask you, what does this mean for us now? <laughs> what is it with you and you and you and you now? <laughs> it reminds me of um, J J John Lennon saying, life is what happens while we are busy making other plans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My father is 99. I called him this morning at 5 o'clock. Finally got him, and he says, so when are you coming? I said, well, you know, it's, it's still cold there, so I think I might wait a couple of months. He goes, a couple of months? He goes, well, if I don't know when you're coming, I can't make plans <laughs> until I know when you're coming. At 99, he's making plans. He's making plans. It was over a bus. <laughs> What is this phenomenon that's present in our lives now, relative to life? <coughs> J. 
cheating on playing archery. That's <laughs> 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 simple enough, is it? <clears throat> uh, well, in all little context, well, I think that, uh, well, it's not easy to, to explain, but the man-man was uh, drawing the circles after he threw the arrows, right? Uh, so, if I have to guess, I think that he was just trying to make his own sort of aims. His own sort of aims. I don't know if this is right or not, but he's just trying to aim for a spot where he wants to, and he wants to succeed at it. Not trying to abide by um, the middle of where everyone usually wants you to go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's not the normal answer, I know, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't always cheat archery, of course. <laughs> but where would the fun be in it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's fun to be always right. <laughs> because you know the place? <laughs> no, because you shoot your arrow and go, I did beautiful, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's something behind that, isn't mm. there? Possibly the human mind, and the human mind in its context where it can't seem to accept failure when it sees it straight in its face with an arrow to the eye. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's human nature. We can't accept um, failure in our dreams. We... It's a sort of a conquest or something. You'll do anything to succeed. Anything at the cost of lives, your friends, <laughs> probably at the cost of being fair. Do you know there's that little story about the two accolades seekers after enlightenment who are having you know, a very, very deep argument about the ways to achieve enlightenment. And so the master happened to come by while they were in the heat of their argument. And so each of them presented their argument to him to ask which one was right. And the first one, when he presented his argument, the master said, yes, you're right, you're right. And the second one presented his argument, and the master said, yes, you're right, you're right. And so another student came by and said, but master, they can't both be right. And the master said, yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> with our life when we don't have a purpose, we don't have an intent. Make one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it lightly. <laughs> what is our relationship with life then? We don't have anything to prove. We don't have some calling. We don't have a creed. And yet, our words and our deeds they shape all. Occurring at every moment. Mm. They shape. They they create. Being shot. Mm. Shot. I'm reminded of that. Uh, you know, when you throw a stone in a pond, and uh, and mm. all the ripples go out, and yet also it's they hit the side and they come back. They come again. back in again. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. It feels, for me, it feels like it, it's a, it's a great story because it feels I often feel quite disorientated in my life at the moment and I'll go, oh, yeah, I feel like the Puss in Boots movie with <laughs> where, all the, where, all the, where all the cats are chasing the, the, the coloured light, the reflection and oh, the, yes. the coloured light goes in and the cat pounces and the coloured yeah. light goes in and the cat pounces and I feel a bit like that, you know, like I'm actually pouncing reflections. you got to take it, you got to take it, you got to take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a sort of a, a, a disorientation and... Um, and yet there's this co-creative co dance I often feel with, with your stories that I go, how did she know? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I'll hear a story and then three days later I'll go, how did she know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I feel like this is exactly that, that there's this, this co-creative dance going on that, that by actually surrendering to the process of, of, of being with you, of being in this meditative process and of being part of this group and the energy that we're, we're creating, that that in itself is 
propelling something in my life mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's it it, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's going forward it feels like it's going <laughs> everywhere so yeah, yeah. yes it, it's an it's a new dimension for yes, me yes it is because yeah. it's not stuff of mind is it because no. without intent without a purpose mind is not there because mind is that purpose that intent and without that purpose Pardon my French, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but it's as, if, it's as if you could imagine creating a story. You get the ending first and then you create the story. Mm -hmm. Like, but in the story, I mean, what I was thinking was it's, it would be as if every night everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. And everything you've done in the day disappeared. And then the next morning you wake up and all, you have to create it all again. Mm -hmm. But really, in a way, that is what happens. It's like things shift, and you have to follow the shift. Mm -hmm. It's not all solid ground we're walking on. Where do we get that idea? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a um, thing. Because, when, for instance, when you're a family, Mm -hmm. I mean, you do nothing but shit because you've got all these people around you, and every day there's something new comes up, and you have to answer that moment and then and so forth. Does it matter what story is told? Well, I'll hear exactly what we need to hear at that moment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. It's like we have a purpose, but we don't have a purpose at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not feeling. You feel like you're um, making your own movements, but somewhere, somewhere, um, you feel that um, something is making you do it. Um, not like mind control or anything, it's just something that's uh, pushing the decisions. Like God. <laughs> like God, or maybe he's just a puppet for something beyond any of our control. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, we better not think of that, otherwise we'd all go loony. <laughs>